Hey, beautiful people. I'm Sharon, also known as Mrs. Q. Welcome and thank you for joining me today. I've been ever so slightly obsessed with Karen Millen and onto my third order from them. So let's get straight into part three of my Karen Millen reviews. For those of you who are new to my channel, and as a reminder to those of you who have been here before, my main focus, despite the fact that this is a review on something that I bought, is on very intentionally using what I already have and shopping my wardrobe, especially for those pieces that I absolutely love and just can't bear to get rid of. When I shop my wardrobe, I'm pretty much taking stock of what I already have and really just trying to make sure that it all gets worn. And if not, that I get rid of it, especially if it's not sparking that joy anymore. For example, if it doesn't fit me anymore, if it doesn't suit me anymore, if I don't feel comfortable in it. And sometimes if it's just not in the best condition that it could be in and I have something else very similar to it that I could wear instead that would look better. Some of the pieces I just want to get rid of in favor of other pieces. Most of us have a stack of not the best quality or best fitting t-shirts and those are the sort of things that I would get rid of in favor of one or two really good quality ones. Now, good quality doesn't necessarily equal expensive. Uniqlo do some really, really good quality t-shirts and vests and also at a good price, even when they're not on sale. Um, though I generally tend to wait till they are on sale and sometimes the sale can be as much as 75% off. Plus they also do really, really good sizes. I mean, I've bought Excel size t-shirts and vests in there and had to return them and get as small as a medium. So play around with it, get them delivered, send them back if you have to, but they are such good quality t-shirts. Mostly when I shop my wardrobe, I'm really just having fun, making sure that I always have something to wear that I look a bit more put together and that I actually made an effort. And also to make sure that I'm not constantly wearing the same thing and all without the price tag of running out and getting something new because I feel like I have nothing to wear. That said, from time to time, I'm going to want to get a few new pieces. And aside from Karen Millen being one of my favorite back in the day brands, one of the main reasons why I've done a couple of shops is because I've noticed what I like to refer to as a gap in my wardrobe. When I was packing to go on our last holiday, I realized that I haven't bought any really nice holiday clothes in quite a long time. And pretty much everything that I packed was your very basic bog standard pieces, you know, your t-shirts, your vests, your shorts, your good old faithful maxi dress. And I am not at all knocking the staples. You know what? They are called staples for a reason. But we have a very special, very big holiday coming up later this year. And what better excuse to spruce up my holiday wardrobe with a couple of really nice, cute popping pieces. So after having a, another and quite extensive look through Karen Millen's collection, here's the first piece that I picked. After my last review, somebody must have heard my comments on their packaging and this first dress actually came on a hanger and with a plastic cover. Unfortunately though, it was still quite creased and with all the intricate detailing, I just couldn't be asked to steam it. This is the kind of dress that you send away to the dry cleaners or off to your mom to iron the pleats back into it. And because of that, you're probably not going to get nearly enough wear out of it as you should or could do, especially with the price tag had you bought it at full price. I'm not going to spend too much time on it or go into the style notes as I have done with the other pieces because sadly it didn't fit. And the fact that it didn't fit, good thing that I didn't waste my time steaming it. This is the taffeta frill pin tuck mini dress. I got this in a size 14 in pale blue. There was an additional 25% off when I placed the order. So I got the dress for 45 pounds reduced from 199 pounds. It only goes up to a size 16, but I don't think that that would have fitted either because generally I find there's not a whole heap of difference uh, from one size to the next. If they would have done it in a size 18, I probably would have got, had to go up to that or possibly even a 20 because there was a huge gap 
uh, closing the zip and the lining was really, really tight. It felt like I had a very rigid bodycon on inside it. My next pick is this cotton broidery belted mini dress, which I got in a size 16 in white. I got this for £30, reduced from £99. And I was quite surprised that it didn't fit because in previous orders where I've got 14s and 16s, they fitted just fine. I did get a black and white broidery dress, which is the same fabric as this one, and that fitted perfectly. So a little disappointing that this one didn't fit and also seeing that there's really no parity in their sizes. Both of these are really pretty dresses. The fabric is lovely and so soft and they're both actually very well made. Unfortunately, the sizing just didn't work for me for both of these two dresses, so they're getting sent back for sure. I did actually find after trying on the dresses and doing a review that they actually do do the white cotton broidery dress in a size 18 in their curvy section. And I placed an order for it, but pretty much immediately got an email to say that the order had been cancelled and my money refunded because it was sold out everywhere. It would have been really nice to try them on side by side just to see what that difference in sizing is. Because as I say, being that this is a 16 and the 18 is in their curvy section, I wonder if there would have been more difference from one size to the next, being that it's in the curvy section. The last item that I picked, I chose with nights out in mind, and it is this strap detail jersey crepe flippy mini dress, which I got in a UK 14 in black. It was £19.50, reduced from 65 and it's pretty much the same as a maxi animal print one that I showed you in my first review. I suppose the only difference really is that it's a mini dress and it's in a block color as opposed to a print. And if it would have been available in a bigger size, I would have got it in a 16 just for that extra little wiggle room because I think from one size to the next, that's really all it gives you. On, I actually like the look of this dress. I've styled it in what I think is a very 80s kind of style with the denim jacket and a pair of high heel shoes. I think it will look just as good with uh, an oversized cardigan or an oversized blazer. You could wear it with trainers, sandals, slippers, anything really. But really, it's just another black dress that could have been from anywhere. And I think it's one of those things that would just kind of get thrown into the dark recesses of my wardrobe until I finally dig it out and it makes its way to the charity shop. So not something I think is worth buying because it's not gonna get worn. And for those of you who know me, I do much more prefer a slip dress. Uh, so yeah, this one again with the other two is definitely, definitely going back. In as much as the first dress was still quite creased and crinkled, I'm encouraged to see that Karen Miller do actually pack some of their stuff really nicely. I was disappointed to see the parity in their sizes and to realize that not all 14s and 16s are made equal. One of the reasons why I've enjoyed shopping at Karen Millen was because of their sizing. I mean, it's always nice to buy something in a dress size smaller than your usual one and see it fit perfectly. With this third order, I think I'm pretty much done with Karen Millen for now. Overall, for all three shops, I'd probably give them about a four out of ten. The only item that I actually kept was the drape cowl neck mini dress um, that I showed you in part two of my Karen Millen reviews. I really do like that dress and I can actually see myself wearing that. I'm actually thinking about replacing my winter coat this year so I may very well take the plunge and buy one of theirs because having had a quick look they have what looks like quite an impressive selection of coats. They range from about £99 to £1,700 at full price so I think it would be really interesting to see the fit and also to see how a £1,700 comes packaged if it just comes thrown in your usual um, post bag or if they put it in a box, if it comes in a hanger with a plastic cover. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> just for that alone, I'd be quite tempted to order one of their coats. At this point, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't actually miss that video should I decide to go ahead and buy a coat from them. I really do feel like getting the most out of my free next day delivery and returns. 
so there may be a whole heap of reviews still to come. For now, though, thank you for spending some time here in my little corner of YouTube. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Please do feel free to share, like and comment and I will see you next time.